Hello, everybody. Um, I'd like to tell you our experiences during the past three years in using PDE and BND tools in the same project in parallel. Um, I had a training with Neil three years ago. Maybe he remembers. And um, after this training, I immediately started to adopt BND tools inside our project. And um, when I prepared the talk, I was thinking of what would be a good catchy thing. And this Jean-Claude Van Damme movie or commercial spot um, fits best to the experiences which we made in using both. Um, who is knowing the video? OK, half of the room. So um, I spent this one minute of Jean-Claude Van Damme, because I think it's showing a very impressive engineering thing. My fair share of dumpy roads and heavyweights. That's what made me what I am today. Now I stand here before you. What you see is a body crafted to perfection. A pair of legs engineered to defy the laws of physics and a mindset to master the most epic of space. They are driving backward. Okay, it was also a real engineering craft. Something about, by, uh, about me, my name is Peter Kirschner. I'm an IT software engineer. I'm working as a freelancer in different OSGI and Eclipse projects since a while. The other details you can see later on. What I want to, to show you today, why we wanted to use BND tools, what are our main points in comparing BND tools to PDE, and um, how we set up the development environment, because that was one of the major tasks which we have in working in parallel in both worlds. Um, what is it when you program with both worlds? And finally, what is our current status and what we would do next? So let's start with some PDA pain points. Um, so we faced a lot of issues with dependency management in PDE. When after the training, I was only using packages anymore. OSGI is all about packages. So I tried to use the learned stuff inside the PDE tooling with the editor, the PDE plugin editor. And um, there is a lot of trouble and issues about that. Um, behind the blue lines, there is always a link explaining the details of this issue. So, and PDE, I think everybody who's working with PDE and doing Eclipse or OSGI development is aware of the target horror. When you switch the target, when you reload the target, you always need to make sure that the proper things are there. Target platform state view is your best friend in that thing, which was only introduced, I think, with Juno. So after that, you have a view which really shows you what is inside your PDE environment and where the dependencies are coming from. So the next trouble we faced was with launch configurations. We are building an Eclipse-based product which will be installed with P2. And um, the P2 installation and the PDE doesn't really matches each other. So we were always struggling with having a launch configuration, which is exactly the thing which is running later on after P2 has installed the things. So PDE during the 
runtime when you launch from it, um, it for instance injects all of the fragments which you have in your workspace or inside your target. Target is aggregating, when you reload the target the things are thrown inside additionally. So you might run into issues with that from the PDE point of view. If you, that's one of the things which we um, want to avoid with BND tools. Additionally, you have some settings which are induced by PDE and it took some time to figure out where those come from and how to configure them. Because the graphical front end might be nice for the beginning, but at the end of the day you want to know what is exactly inside my OSGI runtime, especially when you run into trouble. So that are things which BND tools do better. So the import of the package, including the version ranges and such things are much easier with BND tools and um, you have either the opportunity to use also a graphical editor, but you can go to the text-based editor and use that one as well. In contrary to the P2 target management, you have an OSGI bundle repository management in BND tools and with that you can easily investigate what you have inside your inside your setup at the moment. So these pictures are stolen from the B official BND tool site. You can look there and um, see a much more description on the details. What I like most about BND tools is the instant jar creation. So you, after every save, as a Windows developer, I'm doing that every second when I typed something, um, I immediately have the final jar which runs later on in the OSGI runtime. That is really a nice thing because you can investigate what has been created by BND tools and what have I configured and is everything inside this jar that I expect to come out. And the nice thing is this will also be the outcome of the build. And before the BND tool experience which I made, declarative service were a nice concept, but, but with PDE tooling, hard to implement. I don't want to implement XML files manually or with the graphical editor and PDE tools. That was really an impressive way having these annotations and all of the XML stuff is done by BND tools. So let's compare some of the PDE and BND concepts. First of all, the project layout. There are two major th differences. The first one is with BND or BND tools, you are allowed to have from one Eclipse project multiple bundles. And this is especially when you do API and implementation stuff, um, it reduces all of your um, Eclipse projects by two because you have the API and the implementation in the same project. In the same Eclipse project, but in different bundles. And you can have multiple implementations in the same Eclipse project, in the same logical container, but in a fine-grained OSGI jar for the deployment later on. That was a nice thing and the other nice thing it's related to the target horror in PDE um, the build path which you specify for the Eclipse project is not coming from the Eclipse workspace target as it is in PDE you have a specific BND bundle path which is only inside this Eclipse project that means that as an architect in, in my project, I can easily edit the BND file and restrict the bundle path to the allowed import ranges of um, the bundles. And the developer later on can import those things which are intended to be imported. So this visibility Redu reduction and complexity reduction um, is one of the great things about BND tools. 
when we do BND tools with PDE, we are running into the issue that um, we want to create Eclipse plugins inside the BND tools and we know Eclipse has some resource files like plugins XML and the manifest MF and sometimes it's necessary to have those things also inside the BND tools so we approached like this we just moved the plugin XML and the other resources to a root folder and this root folder is then later on included. The root folder approach in this case um, allows us to have still the plugin XML editor working, but when you move the plugin XML to the top level, you will face some PDE issues because there is no PDE plugin dependency path and your PDE editors are a little bit spurious on this. Okay. Next thing was the bundle handling. I already talked about this a little bit. When we launch PDE, the PDE environment is creating a kind of virtual bundle for the runtime, which is not directly what the PDE build is later on doing. And this causes also some issues in our project and the PDE build and export was really or is an ongoing task of keeping it up to date and updating it for the whole project. So this is, was very tedious. With PND tools I have the physical jar file immediately created inside the generated folder and this is what the one which is launched from the BND tools launcher. So I can immediately see it and I can compare this from the, PD, from the IDE which I have to the build result and it should be the same. So my colleagues called this development the mixed mode and we have some areas where PDE and BND are struggling. PDE share a common target and I already talked about this, they, the import range is coming from the whole workspace. BND tools, you can configure each project and you have therefore a reduced number of import packages and it eases a lot the import package scoping which is required during the development. Now we have some points where we have interdependencies between PDE bundles and BND bundles. So B PDE depending on BND requires some modifications in the environment. What we do is we create the BND jars. We, they are immediately created on every save, but then we use the P2 publisher to create a repository out of this generated jar files and this repository is stored as an include inside the Eclipse target. So we have a kind of setup where you save your PDE bundle, you have to press a button. We don't want to have a builder because sometimes it takes quite a, the project is large and it can take some time to build everything, aggregate it, P2 publish it and especially reloading it in the PDE. So um, this is a manual thing, but we have uh, build scripts gathering and publishing the P2 repo and an additional button for explicitly triggering the reload of this newly created BND tools. So whenever you have an update on the BND side, you can trigger this and it's required to reload the target to make these projects or the resulting jars from the BND world visible inside PDE. Then you can depend on those. Sorry? Yes. This gives you the possibility to use the annotations, for instance, within the PDE environment? No, to, to have the package imports and everything. You can either create a project dependency, but that's not OSGI, because then you see the whole packages. 
if you want to have the pure OSGI way, you need to have the jar files imported in PDE to see the right visibility scope. It's shown in the, in the sample project, which I put on GitHub. And if you have further questions, you can contact me. I can show it to you. So the other way around, BND, depending on PDE, BND is using his, its, own target, <laughs> its own target mechanism by having the build path constructed from the OBR repositories configured inside it. So, um, and when we want to depend on a PDE bundle from BND, we also need to have this PDE bundle inside the OBL world for BND tools. So we tried this also. We created a small build script where the PDE tooling is doing a feature export and creating a P2 repository. This P2 repository can then be indexed by the Bindex tool from OSGI, and this Bindex can then be referenced in the configuration of the BND tools, and then you can add this to the build path for BND. We decided to not use both approaches. So um, BND tools is in our project only for the service layer and not for the UI, and therefore we can restrict the dependencies from PDE to BND. Otherwise we would have a circular tooling dependency and we wanted to avoid this. A little bit of fun with compile settings. To synchronize the compile settings in PDE, that's already challenging. Having the workspace target and then the depending files which all influence the compile process inside JDT. PDE uh, BND tools is using some things in addition. And um, to synchronize this and to have the same settings inside the development environment and inside the build process, we are importing the JDT settings inside our BND project so that the same compile settings are used inside the PDE world with the JDT compiler, inside the BND jar creation world, and also inside the build process. That is um, on the BND tools news group, a suggestion made by Peter Greens. And it's working very fine for us. Okay, some, something about the development setup. Um, two weeks ago, I thought this would be a great thing after I saw an OMF yesterday and after playing with it the last 10 days. Um, I think it's worth spending some time on investigating OMF because it could be a, a really large improvement on the development setup. We are doing it more handcrafted, but I would still want to show it to you because we are working like this since three years and I think it's very effective. So um, we need to, to keep the development IDE running all of the time. So we established a kind of bootstrap IDE where one of us is creating the development environment for the others. And the purpose of this bootstrap IDE is building the IDE fix, the ID fix, for the others, which is then used later on for the product development. And the ID fix consists of one of the Eclipse EPP packages and the additional plugins which we used, BND tools first. And the second purpose is, as we have all faced yesterday, um, the internet is not always what it is, what it should be in Germany, especially when we are in a large company. We have a lot of proxies, and um, the proxies are e either slowing down or not working at all. So um, we are trying to mirror everything which we require locally. That's one of the things why I also avoid using Maven. I know there are repository managers like Nexus and so on where you can cache the whole thing, but um, at the moment I'm really satisfied with our 
a pro art based P2 mirroring approach where I store everything locally. It's a very small build script, and script, which is mirroring the things locally. I know what I have on my machine. I can compare it. I can store it centrally inside our organization and everybody can directly access this. BND comes with some defaults and the defaults doesn't match exactly our environment. So we are using this bootstrap IDE to create a workspace for evaluation what is the current state of the BND configuration. So um, I think the configuration is re referencing some GitHub repositories for the initial build path and, and dependency management and so on. So there are a few references to the World Wide Web inside the BND tool configuration. And this is the first thing which we need to tweak and to adapt to our needs. And that's, is, that is happening inside the Bootstrap IDE and inside a specific workspace for the evaluation and the adaptations of the BND tools configuration. And then we are building a second one, the product workspace, and now we can merge the things which we adapted from the BND tools configuration to our product development. And that happens then in the specific configuration which we made for us. Updating. Updating happens on, in two ways. So we have, first of all, updates on BND versions, which happen very regularly. And um, that's one of the nice things, but we need to update this. And it's no option to have the update manager inside Eclipse, because we, we, we all need to have exactly the same versions, precisely. Every developer must have the same reference environment. He can play with others, but he needs to have at least the reference environment on his machine. So we are doing this also with mirroring the BND tools locally inside the Bootstrap IDE. We are also mirroring additional target repositories, P2 repositories locally, and we are updating this inside the Bootstrap IDE. And then we can again evaluate what has changed inside the BND configuration settings and then we can compare and merge this into our production environment of IDFIX. Regarding this mixed mode, we created some helper, especially this build script for having BND bundles built, indexed, injected into the target. We created um, setup scripts for the whole mirroring, installing, and template launching so that everybody can have multiple workspaces. But that's all on, on the GitHub side. And um, last but not least, we have this small um, PDE target reloader plugin, which um, allows us to be sure that, first of all, the target is reloaded. And internally, we also uh, have some duplicates in the target. For instance, Cummins codec is, I think, four times inside, four different versions. And if you reload, if you load the target in PDE, you don't know exactly which of those four versions will be used. Depending on the machine, it will be the one or the other. So what this target reloader plugin also can do is immediately um, avoiding some of the plugins inside the resulting Eclipse PDE environment. So what is, how is coding in the mixed mode? What is the development? The first part I already told you, we have to edit, do the PDE to BND build, reload, and validate sometimes that really the things are inside. Target platform is your friend in that. I, th I have the feeling this is the only PDE view which is not lying to you. If you that what is inside target platform state view is really what your environment is about. Um, 
another nasty thing about the mixed mode is when you debug, you will have not the real source code from the BND tools inside your debug environment. The breakpoints will open up from the class files inside your jar. Because the PDE tooling knows your jar file from the target and it will open up this jar file. That is a little bit strange because you want to start typing and immediately editing the source code and it's not working and you need to switch to the real source code file inside your PDE world. Control Shift T, camel case notation and you can immediately switch to it. You, you will get used to that if you want to head in the, in the same uh, approach that we did with this mixed mode. But it's, at the beginning it's strange to work like this because you see the source file, it's open, but um, you can't edit it instantly. <coughs> Second thing about coding with BND tools is really fun. It brings back the joy. I have a lot of people in our company which are struggling with versions and blaming OSGI for this strictly package import version ranges trouble, but I think with the BND approach, um, I could explain them that no tool can help you in dependency management. It can ease you the dependency management, but you need to be aware of what is happening and a tool like PDE, which is hiding some of the things or a tool like many of the Maven things I investigated, they are including too many dependencies for you. They are doing too many things and hiding things from you. And this is always causing trouble. And with BND, we are also have some issues, but I know some of, I know m much more of what is happening inside, the inside my development environment. I can easily debug, investigate, and see what, where the things are coming from. So, what is our conclusion? We started in 2012 with BND and um, the purple things are the Eclipse PDE bundles which we have and um, the blue things are the BND bundles you see that we are now for our next release we are heading we, we had the break even so we have more BND bundles than PDE bundles and we are trying now to push hard to get rid of all of the PDE bundles to have this mixed mode no longer um, available so Mix, that, that is our conclusion. Mix mode is hard, so the migration should happen fast. We are on the way since two years, but it took some time also to, to investigate, to get used to BND tools, to set up this development things where we create our development environment, where we can update it, because we, we have to implement features. This one is not, the customer is not interested in this part. He just want to have the features shipped. And um, he, it doesn't matter for him if we use PDE or BND tools. So um, this is our own interest to come to BND tools fast. Um, some of the defaults inside BND tools are not ideal for enterprise environments. Um, that's a general feeling which I have about many cool things which are happening inside the open source world. As soon as you want to catch some of the enterprise developers, such things like proxies must work out of the box. Because most of the company developers are not aware how to configure that properly. And if your tool is not working with that, you will immediately lost 80% of those developers. With Eclipse, it is quite easy to get that running when you use the communication stack inside Eclipse. But 
that is one of the challenges which we faced when we incorporate the things. The other thing is um, storing things inside the user profile is wonderful on my machine. In the enterprise world, it's not working because I can't store in my user profile two gigabytes because the user profile is roamed to the server. My next logging will take 15 minutes if it is working at all. So the use, that's one of the things I also um, saw yesterday with OMF. OMF is also storing all of the things inside the user profile. The, the worst thing you can do in an enterprise environment. That, and you should make sure that everybody knows how to configure this global local storage location outside of the Rome profile on the local machine. These are some of the defaults which are not ideal. That's also the, per the reason why we created this bootstrap evaluation workspace. Because we always investigate inside this workspace what are the configurations which are strange for our enterprise. Um, another thing which we faced, BND tools is lacking some Windows committers. Because some of the issues, or most of the issues which we face are Windows related. Windows is cumbersome with handle, file handles that causes some issues. And it's obvious that the BND tool, none of the BND tool committers is working on Windows continuously. I think either Linux or Mac is, most of them are working on Mac. It's always working on Mac, whatever we tried, whatever bug we, we found, but it, the problems occur on Windows. So I try to do my best <laughs> to, to give feedback on these Windows things. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I already did some. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. The great thing is work becomes more comprehensible. You know what is happening and you get a better feeling. It's reproducible what you are doing inside your development environment when you work with BND tools. You know when, when the colleagues are asking for support, I immediately know a few steps which I have to investigate and I can help them. With PDE, it was always... <sighs> I don't know. Please set up a new workspace. And then they are busy. And that was always, that was most of the times really happening. With BDE, uh, with BND tools, I never had to say, set up the whole workspace again. We always were capable of identifying and solving the issue inside the existing workspace. So besides the split things, I can't do that from Jean-Claude Van Damme, but um, the benefits which we have in building with BND tools, coding, annotated based coding, and also um, the launch things are exceeding our problems by far. And I think after three years, I convinced all of our developers to head into this direction a little bit more to push it to finalize the migration in the next year. Questions? So, um, how will this bind tools do on um, building and something similar to an Eclipse application? Can you? That's exactly on the source code. Have a look at the example source code. You're building your own custom Eclipse. Yes, completely, like completely. We are building an Eclipse-based product. Um, I, I have stored a first set of um, examples on GitHub, which is creating the environment and such things, and also building an Eclipse application. Well, my question was mainly, could you do with just bind tools to have the application that is that the last plugin, which is at least from PDE, uh, uh, that tools wouldn't run? No, if you want to have a product, you need to have the PDE build. Uh, I know you can. You have other ways to to make a jar file, but if you want to have the executable, the approach for us is at the moment um, doing the PDE stuff. And l last thing is using the P2 PDE build to create the product. 
So we are building this application, this sample application with the PDE build to have the executables and everything inside. Last question. Did you say that, that you reached the break even with respect to PDE and DMD in a couple of years? How many resources did you use to reach that goal? Uh, it was as the total project team is about 10 people, 10 developers. Um, and I think most of the time was spent on getting used to the PDE, uh, to the BND um, working. So we had no initial training or such. Only me was um, joining the training and it took me this time to convince everybody and to show them how to work with BND tools. You can do it much faster, much faster. I think if, if we would um, draw all resources on the migration, we could do it in two weeks. But you have to figure it out with these tricks to have this. Yes, that, that took it. Yes, but that's, I can. It seems quite complicated in a way. No, it's not complicated. It's not? It's, okay. Now it's not complicated anymore. Yeah. We, can now, we can now put this experiences on the existing project. Well, thank you very much, Peter. For